the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, by establishing the recently implemented overnight policy rate at 8%, the Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has chosen to further loosen its monetary policy stance. Crystalina Georgievia, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, made a statement about Sri Lanka to the financial community today. On the third trading day of the week, the market continued its upward trend from yesterday, with the S&P SL20 ending higher and the ASPI recording a sizable gain. And Wall Street closed higher as tech stocks recovered and investors processed Trump's tariff promises and Fed minutes. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Monterey Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has decided to further ease its monetary policy stance by setting the newly introduced overnight policy rate at 8%. This move represents a reduction of approximately 50 basis points from the current average rate of call money rate. The Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has decided to ease its monetary policy stance further, setting the newly introduced overnight policy rate at 8%. This change reflects a reduction of approximately 50 basis points from the current level of the average weighted call money rate, which continues to serve as the operating target within the flexible inflation targeting framework. The decision to lower OPR came after a thorough assessment of both domestic and global economic conditions, including associated risks and uncertainties. The board's aim is to ensure inflation moves towards the target of 5% while also supporting the economy's growth toward its full capacity. Several key factors led to this decision, data indicates deeper-than-expected deflationary conditions in the short term with a continued moderation of underlying inflationary pressures and inflation expectations. Today, the International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgievia gave members of the financial community the following remark regarding Sri Lanka. With support from the International Monetary Fund, the Sri Lankan government has embarked on a comprehensive economic reform program aimed at enhancing economic governance, restoring external viability and achieving long-term debt sustainability. The program also focuses on fostering broader macroeconomic stability. Last year, the IMF Executive Board approved a 48-month extended fund facility agreement valued at approximately $3 billion US dollars to assist Sri Lanka in implementing these reforms. As the country's economy shows signs of recovery with inflation remaining low and foreign reserves gradually increasing, the reform program has made a strong start. IMF officials and the Sri Lankan government reached a staff-level agreement on the third review of the program, following the successful completion of the first two reviews. Additionally, a memorandum of understanding was signed between Sri Lanka and its official creditors in June this year, further solidifying the country's path towards economic stability and growth. Ceylon Electricity Board Media Spokesman Engineer ADK Parakramasinghe, he explained that the organization had suggested a tariff reduction of 6 to 11 percent for the last quarter of 2024 in response to a proposed revision to electricity rates that was recently rejected by the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka. In response to a proposed revision to electricity rates that were recently rejected by the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka, this proposal took into account projected costs, second and third quarter revenues and loan repayments from 2014 to 2022. The PUCSL, however, turned down the idea and asked that a fresh application be made for the first half of 2025. According to Parakrama Singha, enough time is needed to approach the new plan for 2025 in a systematic way and the proposal would be sent to the regulator by the 6th of December at the latest. <laughs> Deputy Minister of Economic Development Professor Anil Jayanta Fernando has clarified the procedure for importing vehicles in the future, highlighting the impact of foreign reserve limitations on the process. Deputy Minister of Economic Development Professor Anil Jayanta Fernando clarified the future of vehicle imports during a cabinet press briefing. He stated that they will be permitted under certain categories with a special emphasis on commercial vehicles. He emphasized that constraints on foreign exchange, taking into account the nation's foreign reserve levels, would control the importation process. Professor Fernando went on to say that the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has established new buffers to help manage Sri Lanka's foreign reserves, which have grown to be a noteworthy 
worthy $6.4 billion. The phased approach to vehicle imports will be guided by this cautious reserve management, which will prioritize critical categories and adhere to reserve constraints. There will be three stages to the automobile importation process. The Asian Development Bank has stated that it supports investment prospects in Sri Lanka, pointing out that the government's methodical financial reforms have increased interest from foreign investors. The Asian Development Bank has reaffirmed its support for Sri Lanka's growing investment opportunities, with the ADB delegation highlighting increased foreign investor interest fueled by the government's comprehensive financial reforms. During a recent meeting, ADB's Regional Head of Private Sector Development, Mr. Takeo Koike, and Senior Additional Secretary to the President, Mr. GNRD Aponsu, discussed the expanding investment prospects in the country across key sectors such as climate change mitigation, agricultural modernization, and the energy sector. The meeting emphasized the potential for both direct investments and public-private partnerships in these critical areas, underscoring their role as key drivers of future economic growth. The ADB delegation reiterated its commitment to working with Sri Lanka to attract sustainable investments that align with the country's long-term development goals, and also participated in the discussions reinforcing the collaborative approach towards driving Sri Lanka's economic development. Let's take a short break now. This is a nightly business report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The market maintained yesterday's upward trend on the third trading day of the week, with the ASPI registering a significant gain and the S&P SL20 finishing higher. For further insights, we speak with Tarusha Ashogar from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. So the Columbus Stock Exchange experienced a significant upswing, extended the positive sentiment for the second consecutive day. With the all share price index surpassing 13,000 mark, closing at 13,050, gaining 86 points. So, in a similar trend, uh, the SP SL20 index also climbed higher, closing up by 39 points at 3,884. So, investor sentiment remained optimistic across the board, with notable contributions from Sampath Bank, Hatter National Bank, Richard P. Leeds and Companies, and Dipped Products driving the ASPI's increase for the day. And uh, investor participation was uh, robust uh, with the uh, turnover recorded at LCAT 3.6 billion today. And uh, with the improved detailed participation along with the active buying from uh, high net worth individuals and institutional investors further boosted turnover, notably through off-board transactions involving Ceylon Bank, Hamas Holdings, Ambient Capital and Hatter National Bank. So moving on to the top gainers for the day include Industrial Asphalt, Blue Diamond Voting Share, Rumboda Falls, Hikadupa Resort and Beruvala Resort. And while top losers for the day are Blue Diamond's Non-Voting Share, Ceylon Printers, UB Finance, Paragon Ceylon and Tesagro PLC. Sri Lanka's treasury bill yields dropped across maturities today, auction with all 125 billion rupees offered being sold, following an external debt exchange and a rate cut announcement. For further insights, we spoke with Manusha Kandanarchi from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. In today's treasury bill auction, weighted average yields saw a continuous declining trend across the board for the third consecutive week. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka offered a total of LKR 125 billion treasury bills and total offered amount was fully subscribed. Notably, total bids exceeded the total offered amount by nearly three times. If we look at the rates, the weighted average yield rates further dipped across the board following the sixth monetary policy announcement where the Central Bank of Sri Lanka took a decision to implement single policy interest rate mechanism. Accordingly, three-month T-bill declined by 57 basis points to close at 8.73%, while six-month T-bill dropped by seven basis points to 8.97% and the one-year bill recorded the largest decline of 70 basis point to 9.08 percent. So if I talk about the recent monetary policy announcement, the single 
policy rate will be implemented with the introduction of overnight policy rate at 8%. The effective reduction in policy rate would be around 50 basis points from the current level of the average weighted call money rate which continues to serve as the operating target of the flexible inflation targeting framework. Moreover, with this transition to single policy interest rate mechanism, the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate will no longer be considered policy interest rates of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Gold prices saw an up today as the US dollar eased with investor attention turning to upcoming inflation data from the United States. Market participants are closely monitoring these figures to gauge the potential scale of a Federal Reserve rate cut next month. Spot gold increased by 0.6% reaching $2,646.48 per ounce, recovering from a more than one-week low hit yesterday. Meanwhile, US gold futures rose nearly 1%, trading at $2,647. The market's reaction reflects a cautious optimism as traders await full economic cues that could influence the Federal Reserve's next moves. Oil prices experienced a slight decline in Asian trade today, continuing recent losses, as Israel's agreement to a ceasefire with Hezbollah reduced the risk premium on crude. Brent oil futures for January delivery fell by 0.2%, settling at $72.70 per barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures also dropped 0.2% to $68.30 per barrel. However, the losses were capped by industry data showing an unexpected and substantial draw in U.S. oil inventories, which fluid speculations about tighter supply conditions. Additionally, a Reuters report indicated that the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allies were considering delaying plans to increase production, further limiting the downside for oil prices. <laughs> The Sri Lankan rupee has experienced a slight depreciation against the US dollar today compared to yesterday. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, both the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have seen an increase. Let's now take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Short break now. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back. Techno City launched the HP Victor's Gaming Store at Laptop.lk, offering gamers, students, and professionals a chance to explore HP's latest Victor's notebooks and PCs in a sleek, modern environment. The newly opened HP Victor's Gaming Store launched by TechnoCity at Laptop.lk brings a dynamic blend of performance and sophistication catering to gamers, students and professionals. Whether designing, tackling important projects or immersing in virtual worlds, the HP Victor's range offers unmatched performance in a sleek, modern design. Fami Ismail, the managing director of TechnoCity, explained that they've created a space where technology meets lifestyle, ensuring every customer feels empowered to explore their passions. The store provides visitors with a hands-on experience, offering expert guidance from TechnoCity's knowledgeable team and exceptional after-sales service, reflecting the brand's customer-focused approach. The marketing manager of HP Incorporated India further emphasized that this collaboration with TechnoCity supports HP's vision of blending innovation and creativity. He said that they are proud to deliver products that elevate both work and play for Sri Lanka's dynamic audience, underscoring the importance of meeting the needs of both professional and recreational users. 
Aitken Spence Travels Limited was awarded the title of the most sustainable tour operator destination management company at the Sustainability Awards 2024, organized by the delegation of German Industry and Commerce in Sri Lanka in partnership with the Frederick Norman Foundation for Freedom. This marks the second time Aitken Spence Travels have reached this prestigious recognition. The awards aim to acknowledge the exceptional efforts of tourism stakeholders in promoting sustainability within their businesses and creating a competitive platform platform for visibility and future partnerships. The evaluation criteria focused on sustainability practices, visionary leadership, innovation and resilience to external challenges. Stashani Jayavardhana, Head of Tourism Sector for Aitken Spence PLC, expressed delight at receiving the award again, emphasizing sustainability as a core value. John Keel's Properties and Union Bank have partnered to offer a unique zero-down home ownership plan for women Jaila project buyers, aiming to make home ownership more accessible. The Zero Down program, a collaboration between John Keel's Properties and Union Bank, is a groundbreaking financial initiative that aims to redefine home ownership. This innovative approach offers clients the opportunity to secure a home with no upfront payment, lowering the barrier to entry in the real estate market, particularly for women Jaila projects. Through the program, 75% of the project finance will be provided to clients as Union Bank home loans, granted up front. This allows customers to move into their new homes immediately without the need for a significant down payment. The remaining 25% of the funds will be disbursed gradually in accordance with a carefully structured milestone plan, ensuring that the development progresses smoothly. During the construction period, typically lasting around two years, clients are only required to pay the monthly equivalent of their Union Bank home loan installment. Of the property up front. This unique arrangement helps alleviate financial pressure, allowing customers to focus on their new home without compromising their financial stability. Lanka Pay was honoured with the Best Public-Private Partnership Award at the prestigious ASO CIO 2024 Awards held during the ASCOIO Digital Summit this year in Tokyo, Japan. This recognition underscores the success of Lanka Pay's innovative business model and highlights the importance of collaboration between the government and private sectors in advancing Sri Lanka's digital financial ecosystem, contributing to the nation's journey towards a digitally enabled economy. The ASO CIO Digital Summit this year, organized by the Asian Ocean Computing Industry Organization, is one of the most influential events in the Asia Pacific region. The summit brings together thought leaders, industry experts, and government officials to explore for the impact and future of digital technology innovations. ASO CIO established in 1984 represents ICT associations across 24 countries in the Asia Oceania region, promoting collaboration, knowledge sharing, and the adaptation of digital technologies across the region. Sri Lankan Airlines recently celebrated the 7th anniversary of its Melbourne Colombo route, connecting expatriates, students and tourists with seamless travel options to Sri Lanka and key destinations in India. With steady growth in traffic, including increasing tourist arrivals to Sri Lanka, the Melbourne Colombo route has become a popular choice for travellers visiting friends and relatives or vacationing between Australia and South Asia. This route has played a key role in strengthening cultural and economic ties between the two regions. It has also emerged as one of Sri Lankan Airlines' top performing routes, offering not only direct flights but also a convenient connection, especially for passengers travelling to and from India. Sri Lankan Airlines operates Airbus A330-300 and A330-200 series aircraft on the Melbourne route, providing modern in-flight comforts for passengers. Currently, flights UL604 and UL605 operate a daily service between Colombo and Melbourne. Travellers can expect the award-winning service Sri Lankan Airlines is renowned for, ensuring a comfortable and enjoyable journey. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. 
Asian stocks dropped today and currencies experienced heightened volatility as investors expressed concerns over potential new tariffs under incoming U.S. President Donald Trump following his pledge to impose levies on Canada, Mexico and China. Japan's Nikkei fell by over 1% with the auto sector leading the decline, dropping 3.6% due to the dual pressures of tariff fears and a stronger yen, which dampened profit expectations. Taiwanese stocks lost 1.5% and South Korea's Kospi dropped 0.8%. However, mainland Chinese blue chips managed to recover from early losses, rising by 0.7%, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index gained 0.5%. Wall Street stocks led by S&P 500 and the Nasdaq ended higher as technology stocks rebounded while investors digested President-elect Donald Trump's tariff pledges on top trade partners and the latest minutes from the Federal Reserve. The Dow added about a third of a percent, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq each added roughly six-tenths of a percent. In a development overnight, Trump said he would impose a 25 percent conditional tariff on Canadian and Mexican imports that could violate a free trade deal he negotiated during his previous term. That knocked shares of Ford and General Motors, with GM down 9 percent, as the automakers have highly integrated supply chains across those countries. Meanwhile, minutes of the Fed's policy meeting earlier this month showed officials appeared to be divided over how much further they may need to cut interest rates. Notable stock gains on Tuesday included Microsoft and Apple, while well-known drug companies moved in opposite directions. Shares of Amgen dropped nearly 5 percent after its experimental obesity drug fell short of expectations, while Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, which also make popular weight loss drugs, rose after President Joe Biden proposed expanding Medicare and Medicaid coverage for anti-obesity medications. Huawei Technologies has unveiled its Mate 70 smartphone series, showcasing its own operating system that aims to differentiate itself from U.S. technology. Huawei unveiled its Mate 70 smartphone series on Tuesday. The Chinese tech giant also showed off its own operating system. That's a big step because the firm is looking to cleanly break away from US technology. The Mate 70 is the successor to the 60 series released in August last year. It was widely seen as marking Huawei's comeback to high-end smartphones in competition with Apple. Its business was badly hit by US export curbs before. The launch comes as the US is expected to announce new export controls. Washington could add up to 200 Chinese chip companies to a trade blacklist as soon as this week, which would restrict their access to US suppliers. Huawei executive Richard Yu described the device as the most powerful Mate phone ever. He said prices will start at $758, cheaper than Apple's base iPhone 16 model. You also said the Mate 70 is the first mainstream smartphone to include a satellite paging system. It also has an improved processor and runs on Huawei's own Harmony OS Next operating system. The Mate 70 series is the first major commercial rollout of Harmony OS Next. It's a major step in Huawei's push for software independence since US curbs cut off its access to Google services five years ago. The patriotic sentiment around Huawei's technological breakthrough has helped fuel its market recovery. It's also intensified competition with other players, including iPhone maker Apple. That's all from us on the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates in the Business Globe. Until then, I am Sonia Mudal Thank you for watching and have a good night.